Hello! I thought we'd do a lesson this week on um, using masking fluid. Um, and I thought I would use this rather lovely image of a dandelion clock as my inspiration. This time of year you see lots of dandelions around. It's raining so much they're looking a little bit uh, bedraggled, so that's going to be my inspiration. I've chosen it because it's a really complicated white against a dark background and that is prime territory for using masking fluid. I am not keen on masking fluid, frankly. <laughs> I think it look, often looks a bit clunky, but there comes a time in watercolour when you just have to use it. Um, say something complicated and light against a dark background is, is the time to use it. So if you were painting cow parsley, something like that against a, a dark background, a, a beautiful spider's web, um, you know, with morning dew on it against wonderful sunrise, those sorts of things, masking fluid comes into its own. So a few things to think about, and I have my handy crib sheet here. Um, so already said, avoid if possible. With the fluid, and it comes in different form. Um, I think I've got a coloured one somewhere. I can't find that. Anyway, they, they come in colour, pink, blue, very pale, or this is allegedly white. Um, it's a latex fluid that will congeal over time, if you can see that. Um, if you shake it, it encourages it to congeal. Oh, look, I've just found my blue one. That's... um. Pabio drawing gum there. Um, so shaking encourages it to congeal and one day you will open your uh, bottle, possibly not this one because that's totally shut, let's open this one. You will open your bottle and instead of it being a fluid it'll just be a congealed lump. Well at that point throw it away. If it is thick, thicker than that, it should be sort of quite milky, then you can add a little water to it. Um, if you struggle to see where you've placed it on the paper, you can add a little watercolour to it to tint it. Danger is that that might tint your paper a tiny bit, but shouldn't be an issue. Anyway, so don't shake it because that'll encourage it to congeal. Put this there. Um, I've said about tinting it. You must be careful what you apply it with because it will gum up your brushes. Now you can use a brush and then dip it in quite a concentrated solution of washing up liquid in water, maybe a half-half, and that protects the bristles and lets you rub it out, or wash it out, I should say. However, if you dip your decent watercolour brush into masking fluid, uh, it will stick all, all your bristles, all the hairs, and you will have ruined it. So, um, a mapping pen, old fashioned mapping pen's good. Um, something like an old brush, say, dipped in washing up liquid, or something just like an old co cotton bud. If you need sort of blobby marks, the bud end is good, or cut the end off to whatever shape you want, and you can get very fine lines. You must let it dry totally before um, you paint over the top. Don't use a hairdryer um, to uh, dry it because that's what bakes it onto the surface. Do get rid of it as soon as you can because with time it bonds to the surface of your paper and will rip it as you take it off. So those are my uh, masking fluid tips. First things first, I've done a little thumbnail sketch. You know I'm very keen on having a plan. I'm going to use a square format with single dandelion clock. Um, I've looked at them carefully. The central bit, sort of head, is quite pale. You then have a dark ring where the seeds come into it. You've got a slightly paler ring where you can see through, um, but there are little white 
lines of of the um, the stems of the seeds, and then you've got that lovely fluff round the the outside. So there are sort of concentric circles. The centre looks a bit like a mushroom top because you're seeing it from the side, so I'm noticing that. These are very fine. I'm not going to be able to do those, so I'm going to give the impression of that. If you want to, you could do a few seeds sort of floating away. These will go like this from the centre, single thing, and then you've got a, a little seed on the end. Obviously, that's a bit big. It looks more like a carrot. Um, but that gives you the idea, so you could have some of those floating away. So this is what I'm going to do. I will then sketch, that is a, just a circle to keep me um, going on my paper and I'm ready to apply the masking fluid. The great thing with masking fluid, of course, if you put it in the wrong place, no need to panic, let it dry and then you can just peel it off. So maybe those lines I've done there are a bit clunky, a bit too thick. I'd like them to be a bit more random. If at the end when I look at them I think, oh, they really are a right mess, I can just peel them off and that would be no problem. So that's fine. What I wanted to show you is I'm going to do the same thing, but this time on a prepared canvas that's been prepared with watercolour ground. So here I've put the masking fluid on. You should hopefully be able to see the yellowish dots where it all is and this is now dry. You can tell it's dry if it doesn't come off on your, your fingers. It feels tacky and you can hear that it's still tacky but it won't come off on you or importantly it won't come off on your brushes. Um, if you have done larger dots they take a considerably longer time to dry and as I said right at the beginning don't use a hair dryer because otherwise it welds it to the surface. Colour-wise, for this one I thought I would use blues and greens and because you've masked so much you really do want to get some contrast because if you kept it all very pale all these white marks you've worked really hard on keeping um, will not show up that much. So you might want to have quite juicy colours. Um, I've also got a little gold watercolour here that I thought might be quite fun to add a little sparkle. And, I don't know if you can see this, this is gold um, coloured and it's called, it's aqua bronze. Let me show you, I had to decant it into a different pot because I managed to break the lid. So it's aqua bronze from Schmincke, sorry I put that in the middle, aqua bronze from Schmincke. They do it in silver, a copper colour and, and gold. So I'm going to use some gold on here, but say different jar because I managed to drop the other one. Now I know it's safe to use my ordinary watercolour brush because this is all dry and I'm just going to let the colours mix wet on wet um, on, on the surface. Now that central bit is quite white, so I'm going to leave that white. It's quite dark round it because that's where all the seeds are so they look dark and then I'm going to change colours um, and let those colours mix on the surface. I can even if I want move those colours around um, like that. So this is rather fun working really wet in wet just as you want. You know that the colours are going to dry a little bit um, lighter than they appear when wet so don't be frightened for them to uh, go pretty dark. I don't know what's wrong with this surface. Looking how the watercolour is moving on it. Um, I don't know whether, because it's been stored for a while, whether it's um, got abraded because it it's going very bobbly. Anyway, that's just because it's canvas, don't worry about it. You're probably going to be working on um, paper, so that's not your, your issue, is it? 
if you are working on canvas always worth thinking about your edges because that's a little deep edge like this is lovely because of the edges you can of course move some of that color around if you want paler areas using a little spray which is another way of just getting a bit more texture and then slightly lighter and dilute so that could be fun to do I did say that we were going to try this gold watercolour it's a Japanese one I bought and I haven't used it um, much if at all so let's see just wonder what would happen if I just dropped it in don't know we'll have a look at that okay this has settled down a bit um, so I think now would be a good time oh gosh that was a little lively a bit more than I thought can you see that this is I'm just using a dry brush to put some of this gold powder on and it really well that's very dense I wonder whether it'll stay like that um, I'm not going to put it equally all round I'll be a bit lighter in this corner Wow, See, that's very um, dramatic. Now this aqua bronze, you can oh, I'm all gold as well. Uh, you can mix it with water and, and make it into a paint, which is lovely. You can sprinkle it in. It has a binder, so it should um, stick and work. That's going to be quite interesting. I really love the gold against these blues and turquoises and things. Mm, very exciting. Right, we need to put that to one side so that I am not going to fiddle with it. And uh, let's just have a little look whether the paper version is dry or not. So the best thing to do is check on the biggest blobs. Um, and these, can you see, are still wet. So I need to be patient for a bit longer. Right, for the paper version, I thought I would do it in pinks and reds and yellows for a bit of fun. I thought that the bronze, um, aqua bronze from Schmincke might be quite fun with that. And also I have this, which is called, I don't know if you see that, Pinkest Pink. It is a powder with a bit of binder in that is really, really pink. So I thought some of that might be a bit fun to put in and see what that does. This is now dry and I'm going to do exactly the same. So I'm going to come in, leaving that central dome clean like that. And then mix my colours on the paper just as I did on that canvas but you'll see that they just don't move around quite as much and that's simply the difference between paper and canvas I can again use my little squirty bottle if I want to move some of that paint around and get a bit more of a flow I can tilt it and get some interesting marks you don't want to tilt it too much because you'll just end up with a mush of all the colors together so you do want to keep some areas purer I would suggest so I'm gonna do that off the edge and I'm using very strong colors because I want this to be really really vibrant don't know if you can hear that rain outside. Part of the reason why I wanted to do this so vibrant, it's just been hammering with rain all day. So, um, let's do that. Obviously you don't want to over dilute using that little bottle. This is 
going to be cropped so we don't particularly have to bother about the, that edge. This really is time to play with colours. You've got some colours that you haven't used before. Now's the time to play and see see what they, how they work together. I'm just going to soften those edges. Maybe get a little bit of flow going. Right, let's see whether that aqua bronze, the bronze colour, or the, sorry, the coppery colour, whether that uh, works in the same way as the, the gold did. So, I've got my aqua bronze here. I don't think I've ever used this. seems to almost repel the watercolour which is interesting so I'm putting that on and that'll give a little bit of sparkle which is rather fun okay and then let's see how that pink works oh my lord that is pink it's quite fun. So just dropping the pink pigment mostly over myself by the looks of things but over the picture see how that works. I'm gonna let that dry and we'll come back to it. Right that is now dry. The way to tell if it's dry is to use the back of the hand. If it feels slightly cool that means there's moisture there. And my paper version is also dry. So let's have a look. Ooh, just get some pink on it. That wasn't intended. So let's see what happens when we start taking the masking fluid on. Off. Oh, this is the moment of truth. Oh, rather nice. You literally use your finger, rub it off. Particularly on the canvas, it comes off incredibly easily but I'll, we'll do a little comparison. So you can see how it's coming off and you can see the white marks that you've got. And see how, obviously against a very dark background, how they're more dramatic than, say, against that lighter background. Anyway, that gives you an idea. Let's see how it is on the paper. So that's your paper. And you can hope you can see straight away that you have to work a little bit harder to get it to come off the paper. It will come off just in the same way using your finger. If you don't like the feel of it, and some people don't, then you could always use um, an eraser just to pick up and in fact you can actually get special tools for this um, to take masking fluid off. I have to say I think that's going too far but you can see on the paper you need to uh, rub a bit more to get, get that masking fluid off and to make sure you've got it all off. This will only get harder with time. If I left this for a week, it would be really hard to remove. So rather than watching me do that, I'll remove the rest and then we'll come back. Right, so I've removed all that masking fluid and this is what I'm left with. You can see the sheen of that gold, which is rather fun. And this is the most important thing about masking fluid is, fine, you've taken it off. You don't have to just live with what's there. If you don't like it, do something about it. Um, too often I see people just kind of take what's there and that looks really harsh and clunky. So I'm going to start working into this. So first of all, I'm going to start by sorting out 
that strange shape and actually this sort of dome in the middle of course would have shadow on it so I'm just smoothing the edge and then I'm gonna drop a bit darker in here and make that look a little bit more rounded I kind of wish I bought some of those white lines through, ah, but because of course I could just pull that in that way and I can do some lifting out. Because you're lifting it just makes it a softer, more interesting mark anyway. Use a little bit of green in there just to zhuzh it up a bit. already I'm happier with that sort of centre. Now I need to think um, what, you know what else I want to do and I know that we've got the sort of the dark seeds here as well that sort of uh, come here so I might do some of those into this dark area and then maybe I'll use a little bigger brush and I'll do some of that green gold and any, anything that's looking a bit clunky or I don't like the look of well I can just work into that and develop my lovely um, dandelion clock here can you see that so working in with finer dark lines and you know what I don't want these all really stark white because that immediately just shouts masking fluid at you but if you work in some of those uh, colour into the white area it looks far more natural and interesting and softer and all those things that we love. So I'm going to carry on working into this softening, blending, adding colour, some definition and then I'll come back and show you when I've done a bit more. Right, you can see that I've been working into this um, and putting in, I've put in a stem here, I've worked the little bubbles into the top and so forth. So I'm getting towards the end and I don't want to fiddle too much. I thought I would just finish off using some of that gold watercolour that I showed you earlier. Um, these are the little seedy bits here and if you look closely they've got sort of um, ridges in them so I thought it might be quite fun to just put a little bit of that detail in there on a couple of those sort of seeds just to bring those forward and maybe just more round the edges. It's interesting this gold watercolour is a different colour gold from that gold powder I sprinkled in so it's um, sort of darker more almost sort of mustardy with the gold powder. It's definitely got more shine to it. Doesn't matter, they both seem really nice, but uh, just just a little bit different. So I'm just gonna bring some of that gold in there. I might just put a few lines there, and then because I've got these little dots that I did round with the masking fluid right at the beginning and they're looking a little harsh to me, a little disjointed. So I'm going to mix up quite a watery amount of this and see if I can get some larger dots just to, uh, having to be quite vicious, um, sometimes I use a little syringe to uh, put big dots rather than these sort of little splatters but my I'm in the 
log cabin at the moment, my studio at the end of the garden and it's too wet and cold to zoom into the house to get those syringes. Okay, I'm in fiddle territory if I'm not too careful. I have to say, I think that's probably about finished. So, I will put that aside to totally dry, look at it with fresh eyes, just see if there's any final adjustments and then call it a day. So that was the little canvas with the masking fluid, then lots of painting, bit of texture, um, and I will do exactly the same on the paper version that I did. Hope you've enjoyed that, and I'd love to see what you do. Bye for now.